Ladies and Gentlemen, sehr verehrte Damen und Herren, wir sind jetzt wieder live und in Farbe und auch für unsere Freunde der englischen Sprache mittendrin mit einem unserer Top-Gäste aus dem Ausland. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass es uns gelungen ist, Marshall Lager erneut zu gewinnen. Hi, there is Marshall. Hello. Und äh, für den lieben Michael Jopen, der auch die nächste Session lieber in Kölsch gehabt hätte. Um, one day you speak as fluently English as uh, you can drink Kölsch. Trust me. Yeah? I would love a Kölsch right now. Probably yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, so I continue for the fast, quick and introductory round. Um, was sind unsere Themen heute? Wir möchten uns heute beschäftigen, ähm, da uns leider der Graham Hill ähm, wieder abhanden gekommen ist. Äh, und es ist ein bisschen spannender, ähm, wie wir ihn dann an Bord kriegen, bei einem der nächsten Termine. Ähm, deshalb haben wir uns entschlossen, das Thema ähm, auf die Aktualitäten zu ziehen. Das heißt also, wer gewinnt das Rennen und den Battle um TikTok? Und der weitere Punkt ist dann, inwiefern, äh, was kommt nach CXM? Also das Topic Beyond CXM und woraus werden diese Elemente bestehen? Now back to English and to Marshall. Um, Hello, Ross. I'd be most honored, dear Marshall, if you uh, introduce yourself and tell a bit about your background for the audience. Well, thank you. I'd be happy to introduce myself. My name is Marshall Lager. I am from the United States, and that's where I live. I'm in Chicago, Illinois, currently. English? And... I speak English. <laughs> I only speak English, I'm afraid. Uh, I am a CRM analyst, uh, currently an independent CRM analyst. Uh, I've been following that industry for more than 15 years, have written for CRM Magazine, been an independent consultant, worked for a few analyst firms, and currently I'm... Can I talk about anything, Thomas? Of course you can. I'm trying to work out a partnership with my friend Thomas over there for consulting here in the States. Uh, I have a particular passion for customer experience yeah. and the power of social media in the hands of the consumer. And I'm very happy to be here. And we are happy to have you here. Exactly. <laughs> in, in, in our room. <laughs> yeah. And it is um, to have you uh, as, let's say, one in the merry bunch of uh, the right guys from the good side Uh, the brighter side from the power may the force be with us <laughs> to put it in, in, in Star Wars language um, it is um, a delight to hear that uh, Thomas and you all are starting up something new especially under the perspective let's put that uh, again as one of the interesting aspects the customer has the gun now ja, der Kunde hat das Gewehr, as we had this topic also in our Berlin talk. Um, and we, this is an interesting aspect if we go over to after Tom is introducing himself and what he did, um, that we start with, uh, what is going on with TikTok? Tom? Yeah, what is going on with TikTok? Yeah, very good question, isn't it? <laughs> 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 well, I, I heard from a very reliable source, um, the one who's currently in the upper left corner of my screen, that the Chinese government will allow the release of TikTok's data, but not its algorithm. Is that correct? So that's, yeah. going, to, that's yeah. going to have uh, probably a chilling effect on any possible purchase of that company. Um, my first guess was that you are only 
getting the chassis of the car, but no engine and nothing to make it move. Yeah. So that's yeah, a, a sexy. No. So if you just put it at the top of a hill and let it roll. Oh, well, for example, yeah. But it's it's a yes and it's a yes and a no. So there are three assets, three important assets. One is of course the the algorithm itself, which yeah. given enough time can be replicated. The second algorithm or the second part that is interesting well for Walmart, Microsoft as well as Oracle, is the data that already got created by it. And <laughs> the steady flow of data that is to be created. For Oracle also, and especially in the light of the Blue Kai disaster that they had recently, and on top of it, all browser vendors creating another disaster for them by putting cookies into prison, basically. So rendering them pretty much useless for what Blue Kai is doing means tracking us across the web. And the third one is, and that is a very interesting thought as well, is that, well, you don't need the, you only need the binaries of the algorithm, means the runtimes, put them onto you, into a container and onto your, into your data center or into your own cloud. And then all of a sudden you have a pretty massive workload, which, can be rented out well so then you are just a business partner so you don't own anything you just run it and the data is why is my camera disconnected no <laughs> and reconnected interesting message that i got right now <laughs> so, so you have the you have the data that is hosted in your own databases and oracle is well probably the database company around you have quite a load in your data center that has gives at least a proof of concept that you are a serious player. And right now, if you're looking, well, you can't read my Clash of Titans yet because I didn't release it yet. But if you're looking into Gartner's quadrant on IaaS or infrastructure and cloud services, I think they are calling it right now, they are a niche player. Why are they a niche player? Because they don't have anything to show. So since April or May, they have Zoom to show. And if they have and get TikTok, they, they'll have something to, to show for real. So those two pretty massive cloud workloads that at least show that they can scale. And I believe they can run it, means they can scale enough. And with that, they show that they are not a tier two or tier three player in the infrastructure game, but a tier one player, which they probably would like to be. Having said that, it's probably more sense to have the, the whole thing. So I actually would have thought that there's more flesh in the game for, for Walmart and Microsoft in there. And well, Thinking a bit further, some of it, Oracle has, with ATG, Oracle owns an e-commerce infrastructure. Oracle has a fairly strong customer data platform. So now consider ingesting all the data that comes from TikTok, ingesting on top of it all the data that comes from Blue Kai, mm -hmm. combining that, and add the ability of TikTok to also be an extended e-commerce system for its especially spur of the moment purchases. All of a sudden you also have a data play and you might have an, an e-commerce as a service. So at that point in time, a Shopify should be probably a bit scared. Shopify and the other vendors like those. Yeah. So there are a few things that I think can be can be interesting on top of what is so obvious. Whether they play it or not, I'm not Larry Ellison, but this is something that they probably have considered and pursue or won't for whatever reason it is. But one interesting aspect is 
and that's, that has to do with the algorithm. Right now, what I would bet is that ByteDance is combining the data that comes out of its 27, 28, 30, or how many applications it has, and trains its algorithm based on all of this data, which it can't do and probably can't do anymore if the US and some other data is carved out. Then that might lead to a degradation of the what is the for for your eyes page or the front page basically of TikTok, which is something that is kind of a risk because I'm fairly sure that the Chinese won't put their Chinese data onto an US onto a US server. Not yet. They <laughs> might put the US by money and in uh, let's say investments, but they did not uh, collect the money. Yeah. Because these days there are no honorable businessmen around who would pay them something for real, but they simply start printing money instead of what what's the benefit if you get some more bucks? Nothing. Mm -hmm. You can find anything for it. Yeah. yeah. If you get something in real investment, uh, such as in real estate or uh, in ground to build some factories or, uh, for instance, they pay you in giving away California. Mm. It's a double solving problem, such as California can get independent again. <laughs> what a suggestion, because they are most charming, the only ones which have a more um, critical attitude to privacy, which is concerning me in the overall in the United States that California is with the CCPA having quite a restrictive law or a set of laws and opportunities to guarantee a certain privacy, which is one of my concerns if Oracle uh, is taking up uh, the bit on getting TikTok in whatever shape it will be sold. So, yeah. um, I share these concerns, what you mentioned, Thomas. And um, I also see the opportunity that um, Larry Ellison might be over 70, but he is still the guy who um, not only out of a joke was trained to fly a MiG-29 trainer. So ages ago I said, guys, it's only two hours preparation time and this thing is armed. So imagine if one of the bad guys is in the air and Larry has his concerns. He just shoot them out of the air, right by the word. Yeah. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> well. I yeah. didn't say that. I was kidding. Larry, you're a wonderful man. I, I, I wish you all the best. That said, I'm going to stay out of his airspace. Uh, yes, and, and um, I think that he become a lot calmer because uh, the wisdom of age, like is with Hasso, he's collecting paintings and uh, giving this to um, as a gift to the state. Um, they have now other targets they are looking for to achieve. He made a very smart move in investing in Tesla and earning from the value of Tesla and a bunch of money, which is incredible. Even it's only book money, but it is a value he's, uh, which is represented by his shares. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was wondering um, the stack, what is in the Oracle uh, portfolio? might not be as shiny as it was 10 or 15 years ago, but there is still some of the Siebel Foundation from the good old CRM days where Bob Stutz is getting glaring eyes, yeah, if he comes back to his own Siebel baby, um, that uh, till now nothing was designed and programmed in the depths and in the broad like Siebel. Yeah? And um, it might be that Larry, um, with a certain attitude, 
is looking for some customers who he could win to join in in a, let's say oracle for zero yeah <laughs> a invented oracle where all his dreams from the 70s the 80s the 90s are coming true like the net pc and all that stuff he had as ideas spread it to the market and everybody has said uh, uh what pills you take yeah <laughs> but, but nowadays that we have the infrastructure we have the technology mm -hmm. and we have the ability and um he had always not only had the commercial attitude but there was always uh some some attitude in him which is similar to mark uh benioff um in in that um um good mensch sign um this um uh, i'm missing the right word thomas i was uh that's the philanthropic philanthropy uh attitude they want to do something good and give something back to the community and uh the people um they sold their software to yeah? the countries i can see that i believe that you're right uh we do have the computing power, we have the infrastructure and the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Moreover, we have a population worldwide that is able to accept mm -hmm. that sort of technology. It's not the sort it's not the sort of jump forward that it would have been in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. Uh, we are in a position where he could give that back to the world. And I think that he would want to. He's, as he said, comparing him to Mark Benioff in terms of uh, philanthropy is not unreasonable. You know, when you have that much, anything that you give back in terms of percentage is going to go a very, very long way. And with the resources of Oracle behind him, he could do a tremendous amount. If you see that the software solutions he is giving away for free to universities, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, only in English. So that would have Sorry. been, uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, at least it would have been a, a real positive forward for a lot of universities here in Germany. And they would have such a humble software they got donated for free. In these days, in the corona time in COVID 19 pandemic times we see how incapable we are to get our our pupils and students set it up with the right equipment so at judging from that point a stupid uh terminal with some extra intelligence would be a smart move forward as long as we have the bandwidth, which is another nice topic. Yeah? In the 80s, you had more bandwidth in uh, some suburbs from Los Angeles than we have here in Berlin. Yeah? Sure. Uh, and, and, and you could go with mobile cards, which have more bandwidth than you can buy these days from Deutsche Telekom in Berlin. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it is. I would, it's hard for me to imagine that. The idea that someplace that is a business and technology capital, such as Berlin, would have such poor connectivity amazes me. You know, when you look at yeah. places like uh, Seoul, where you have just ubiquitous high speed Wi Fi, or, you know, as you say, the suburbs here in any city of the u.s mm. you can have tremendous speed and you know upload download it amazes me i don't understand why why those investments aren't being made perhaps you could ask mrs merkel for me um, yeah, it's even pre-merkel part of it is there was a pretty widespread copper infrastructure and some, someone found a way to extend its life by multiplexing the signals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, helped a little, which helped 
avoiding investments. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what well, a pretty much still state-owned company like the telecom. Dutch card. Of course, of course. <laughs> Pawn store. Yeah. Yeah, well, but this is well yet yet another CRM convo, I guess. Yeah. Any join yeah. one, actually. I'm glad that we're giving you more things to talk about. And yeah. on the bright side, even if the software is only available in English at the moment, Oracle is very good about localization and language expansion. So even if it's not available in German now, if it isn't available in six months, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, same here. All right. Then there is the other alternative. English is not that difficult a language. I learned it myself. So sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get myself understood. If uh, Oracle Germany would take, an, would take the approach with uh, the new management team, what they have aboard with a new CIO, a lot of people which are new to Oracle right now, and they move um, proactively towards uh, the government organization and the non-government organizations to get them a helping hand with what they can help with. And they would have a connection with Larry himself and some hardware distributors. I see that a donation in that way would give uh, a big, big positive impact and uh, getting not only Oracle into the tier one, two, three uh, corner from value and from capability and from the regional cloud centers he promoted again, but also that he um, has a, a different perspective in, in the visibility on how people see Oracle these days. Because if it comes to software, um, it is uh, always the big question mark, what really they do have in software side of the database? And what do people recognize what there is in valuable tools, which are to a certain degree for free since ages? Yeah? And people do not utilize it because they simply don't know it. Yeah? So yeah. marketing for the good to build the brand in we give you a lot for free, but just take it. You have to kneel down and pick it up from the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But please pick it up. Yeah. Huh? Interesting aspect. But sure. uh, what do you think? Um, how quick there will be a decision if TikTok, in whatever substance they get for the money, will be sold? Um, hmm. When will it happen? It's a very good question. I think that at this point, TikTok would want to extend the negotiations because the longer they go on, the more valuable they become. Mm -hmm. they are st they're still gaining momentum. Uh, they're still gaining followers and users. It, it, it would be in Oracle's or any other uh, buying company's best interests to get them now before they take off sooner. I would say that let's let's assume that Oracle is going to be the one that acquires them. It, it, it's mm -hmm. a safe assumption that they're first on the list. If Oracle is going to acquire them, they want to do it in the next three months. Uh, if they don't do that, then I think it's going to be another nine months to a year before any deal goes through. Okay. That's okay. just based on based on experience. I don't have any numbers that I can use to uh, to back that up, mm -hmm. but it, it would follow the sort of patterns I've seen in uh, negotiations like this. On the other hand, there is a deadline, isn't it? Is imposed, there? imposed, yeah, September 20. Oh, well then. The cut off date given by the President of the United States for shutting it off, unless there is a a definite agreement that is good enough for him, probably. There is another, there's another thing at stake there. 
<laughs> this president has been shown to be able to talk a very good game until somebody says no to him. And then he backpedals and changes his mind. So well, if it goes beyond... He has become a politician, yeah? Yeah. It, oh, worse. Um, what the hell? We can talk about this. Um, he <laughs> behaves more like a bully than a politician. He puts on a very strong face and says how things are going to be. Mm. Then you say, no. And he goes, oh, okay, okay, okay. Have it your way. It's not my problem. So I think that if it looks like the deal is going to go beyond September 20th, he will suddenly become very, very quiet. Why? 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 Let's, let's put another assumption behind it. So TikTok, well, it's not an assumption. We can look up the stats. TikTokers are young. Yeah. So the majority, the majority of them is it's more than 60% or more than 70% even is 35 and younger. And so uh, kids, yeah. so uh, th those people tend to, well, now we are talking voting, so tend to vote the other party. Uh, so, and, and they have shown a, an ability to rally parties that disrupt events which makes it a good thing for him to shut it down. <laughs> it's true. So uh, what I really believe there is that this is a deadline. This is a deadline. And for what, for what it's worth, that's, that's why they came on with a decision point on, on Sunday, basically. The news broke on Sunday evening. I believe it's going to come I'm back. I'm writing my article, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it that way. Um, it's a bit like uh, on the races. That uh, either <laughs> he wins or he has some problems to solve because yeah. there was another rumor that uh, he is out of money. He spent already 800 millions. He has to feed a hundred million by himself from his own treasure department, which is not so brilliant as we do. And now he's in trouble where he gets some more donations. And Larry is a big fan of his. So um, if there is only a minimum truth in that he would like to have an extra tax on that deal, and some of that tax money would suddenly go into the election funds of some party. I wouldn't be surprised. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if he tried. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's blatantly illegal. And mm. so we're uh, doing electional activities in the White House garden till now. Yeah, that was an unwritten law. <laughs> ah, but unwritten. Oh, I yeah. which is easy to avoid. From 1700 oh. and no spot. Yeah. Look, looking at looking at a TikTok and looking at what this company or ByteDance in general as a company is doing. Yeah. This I think is a very good connection to customer experience. So well, <laughs> there must be some experience because it's kind of addictive, right? So a, a colleague of my yeah. wife said, well, actually, he's one of the older ones in there, apparently, so beyond 35. <laughs> he said he needed to uninstall it because he couldn't stop it anymore. This means that basically says that the algorithm is, I don't say that he's addicted, but the algorithm basically fed him with what he found interesting, so which is, is quite amazing. Because if, if I look at my Facebook feed, I, I switch off instantly because that's <laughs> <laughs> most, mostly <laughs> present people accepted, <laughs> exempt. BS, yeah. So to, to put the short version of it, so, so there's lots of things that I don't really, I don't really need. Yeah. 
So if that is different, by the way, similar for the Twitter feed, yeah. So just go by. So if if that is true, that it's that attracting to many people, then there's a lot of experience behind it, which is then good for not only the one the ones who are creating the the content, but yeah. also the ones who are paying the content creators, which are the advertisers at the end of the day. Yeah? So there we are getting into, I think, real interesting stories about well, so grayish advertisement, but also into a how to attract people and mm -hmm. how to lead them into a journey. Yeah. So if I'm a well a CPG vendor, for example, yeah. So uh, I want people between oh, males between twenty and thirty-five to buy my aftershave. And want to convince them getting that. So, well, yeah, you're well shaved, almost as good as I. <laughs> Just that you need to work for it, I guess. <laughs> so, th there we are looking into creating a first experience that leads these guys to re probably repeatedly purchasing my aftershave yeah. or my eau de toilette or eau de cologne, whatever it is. Yeah. So, and there we are coming into the probably interesting discussion of how, how to do that. So where there is always some, some kind of hyped AI right now, but there's also a lot of process. Another hype topic is CDP. Yet another one is Martech. Third one, oh, I, we, we could go on incredibly. Yeah? So the, the interesting question is, where does it go and why? What is coming beyond CXN? That is your question. That is just... the short version of my lengthy rant. Excellent segue. Uh, it is um, needed to get a proper introduction from our TikTok move into our second topic beyond the CXM discussion. And you um, took up all the bits and pieces which are so sexy in it. And I wanted to avoid that I get rejected at the border. <laughs> oh, don't be so afraid. It's like the gentleman said, for the free and the brave, no, you are free, you are free. Okay. <laughs> where to pay, they'll never recognize you. But still, so how, where, where do we go? Where, do, where does it go? What is your um, ideas on that, Marshall? Well, we had been discussing the idea of artificial intelligence and massive data processing here. And of course we are because we're talking about TikTok and consumer data. My idea is that it has to happen. Customers, people only have so many minutes in an hour, so many hours in a day to pay attention to any given product. So whatever is going to be crossing their screen has got to grab them. It's got to be something that is immediately interesting, that applies to their lives and can draw them in to make them follow that breadcrumb trail uh, to become customers of whatever product it is, or at least you know to join that stream so that sometime down the line they will be engaged. Yeah, you can't do that one to one on that kind of scale. We wish we could, but we can't. And really for consumer goods, what would be the point? So obviously it's it's going to be something handed off to the machines. And you know that's why the data from TikTok is such an important such, such an important uh, commodity. Having that is you know it's the keys to the bank. Oh, 
Okay, but still then, doesn't that disregard or that thought, continuing that thought, doesn't that disregard the wishes of said consumers? I'm a little bit of a cynic when it comes to that, unfortunately. <laughs> I love the idea of following the wishes of the consumers. Mm -hmm. But if businesses were to do that, they would never advertise. Ah. So let's face it, at some point, uh, any company that is trying to make money for itself has got to at least occasionally prioritize its needs over the desires of its customers. And in so doing, they've got to invest in the technologies that are going to get inside of those customers' heads. Now, most terms of service of social media products or even websites basically give those companies permission yeah. to do this. Uh, nobody reads the terms of service. Exactly. I don't read the terms of service and I know about this. You don't read the terms of service, you don't read the terms of service. Nobody reads them. They're far too long. Yeah, they're far Doesn't too long. Doesn't fit into the goldfish economy. Yeah, they're far too long and mm. usually a little bit too confusing. And yeah, we need a law degree. <laughs> yeah. So it's there. We give information away for free as consumers mm -hmm. and we do it because we get something out of it you know if you have to watch the advertisement to see the video you're going to watch the advertisement because you want to see the video if you have to provide access to cookies to download the white paper or to watch the video you're going to do that we have not, we, I'm sorry, we, certainly the older generations and to some extent the younger generations haven't really grown up thinking that they are giving away something that is valuable. And the old saying is that if you're receiving a product for free, you are the product. And I know that that's a cliche, but it's true. Um, people of our age, and probably the people who are watching us, don't always don't always think about that, but it's true. The younger people may be aware of it, but I don't think they care because they know it, but they. I don't know, maybe it's that sense of youthful invulnerability or this isn't going to affect me or whatever. They don't but, know any different. Yeah. You know, they've grown up in a world where mm -hmm. this is what you do. Yeah. You accept the cookie. My you oldest was born in 2006. They, they don't know a word without an iPhone. It's true. Uh -huh. But so, still, so now looking at... It's, it's going to be, it sounds like, eat shit. Yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the real question of, it's a philosophical question, of course, if it's beyond CXM, is where, where should it go? How much? Because, yeah, yes, yes, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So means you will want to get some value out of, of what you get. Well, you will want to need to get provided with some value because you give away some value. So, and I, I know that there is a difference in, in valuation. I mean, that's what bartering is about, right? I, I give away what I have because that what I want is more valuable to me. And as you take what I give, this is more valuable to you than it is for me. Exactly, but that is why we don't barter that much anymore. It's why yeah, we don't barter but, exchange. Yeah, if you if if we are looking into giving away data, 
then we are not even bartering as well. So actually, one could say you, somebody puts a gun on your chest. Yeah, and it is America. This could happen. <laughs> Well, that's all. well. Apparently, the Americans think it's the same in China, and they don't want it. <laughs> and the Europeans are too stupid to to ban it all, or not willing to, or whatever. So, the the real question there is, where, where should it go, and what can be done? What what philosophy could be could be behind it, so that the playing game becomes a bit level anymore so beyond the exit is it only convenience or is it more than uh, giving convenience and some bits and pieces because what both of you um, were telling is that there is value in exchange value i would like to have such as more than a six to eight pages white paper, real valuable content. And who is giving away these days real valuable content? If you do your proper judgment where you give your data away for, for eight, 10, 12 pages, better commercials with uh, some nice and sexy, shiny visuals, that would not be in the near future my attitude to give away my data because I'm concerned. Yeah, with yeah the but you're an old guy as I am. Yeah, uh, right you yeah. are. And mm. my kids, and this is interesting because we come back to our Berlin talk where Marshall said we should not underestimate the brightness of our young people. Mm. Worldwide scene. My kids are very, very concerned about how data is traded. The one in BCG, even most, instead of the ones which are living in Berlin, the one who is now in Portugal, uh, and the other who is still in Berlin, who is looking for some non-government organizations, how ecosystems work, how pollution is um, taking um, effects, and such as how much pollution data centers create and how much energy consumed by each bits and search engine activity is done. So this is another question which is coming beyond CXM. How willing are we to continue this game of giving away our data, our personality, our privacy? And what do we trade it in for? Yeah, I think willingness may be starting to, uh, we may be reaching the peak of willingness mm -hmm. and which we will not proceed because uh, as we've discussed before, and I think you mentioned earlier, uh, privacy legislation, uh, GDPR, CCPA, uh, a lot of that applies um, to you know, it applies to business to business communications, but it applies very strongly to business to consumer communications. And surprise, that includes advertising. Your people have become sick of it. You know, we've got about as much as we can handle, possibly more. So I don't think that it can get much more intense than it already is without a radical change to the playing field. I can imagine, and this is more science fiction than mm -hmm. reality, I can imagine switching over to a purely capitalist monetized system of advertising where you get paid for your time to watch in actual currency. Okay. And use it to buy the services that you're consuming online or in the real world. Again, science fiction at this point, but I can imagine it. And that is about the only way that the, uh, the trading of data and the opening up of privacy could become any more intense. It's a very plausible uh, approach. Like you said, attention 
is becoming a currency. We have only a limited amount of time we can pay attention to, which is the side of sleeping. So even if we are um, elder people and we need only six hours instead of nine, but there is a certain time we work or we should work and the rest of the time we could be able to pay attention to commercials or informations which are to our liking. By the way, Marshall, it's not that science fiction. So there is Jeremy Epstein who for years already promotes this kind of thing, especially since blockchain came up. So blockchain for marketing. So you will be, he is after models that say you are paid for your time or rewarded for looking at this advertisement. Mm -hmm. The question is whether that can really take off because all the other ones who are serving this advertisement, the, the Googles and Facebooks and TikToks of this planet, cannot be really interested in that because it would would dig deeply into their revenues. We shall the, see. The, the idea is certainly out in the market. Oh, well, the only other way to do it would be find a way to give us our time back. And that is science fiction. Mm -hmm. The time that we spend watching advertising gets tacked on again to the end of our lives. Wouldn't that be nice? Haven't you ever watched something and said, well, there's two minutes of my life I'm never going to get back? Mm -hmm. If you could get it back. Go back to Michael Ende, the Unendliche Geschichte, the, um, I don't the know. Right. The Sorry, yeah. yeah. And these guys which are smoking the time cigars such as the consumption of time they stole by people and they make their cigars out of. This is a, a bit of fairy tale. But there was another more a science fiction story where you were paid and running around into not only your salary, but into social appreciation from others. And if you do not have enough points in an app, you were not appreciated and allowed to get the better car, the better housing, or whatsoever. Black yeah. mirror. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but imagine, imagine. Yeah. Well, it's it's already reality. Yeah. So I mean, the, uh, the there's a the series Black Mirror has a, one of the first episodes of it. it deals exactly with that. Something so like your that. socials, your. Your cloud score is basically your your personal value. Yeah. And well, going back to China, it's what they are already doing. They have a social score on, on their people. That's right. Yeah. Welcome to reality. <laughs> yeah. um, it's so. a different big mother is watching you, but it is. And it is a way of how artificial intelligence and robotic process automation are coming into the game um, beyond CXM and um, how, uh, let's say, um, prescriptive analytics come to the point that they give you a certain aspect of the next best action talk. Yeah? And if you analyze some um, podcasts from um, a German radio station here in the part of the country where I live in, Hessische Rundfunk, about artificial intelligence. Hey, Marshall, Tom, you are kept in shock. What What is behind the story and how much we are already relying on smarter um, artificial parts of intelligence and Tom is always placing there are the two sides, the, the smarter and the more stupid side. Yeah. And uh, this I'm today stupid. artificial yeah. stupidity. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> nature <and> stupidity. <laughs> and I'm a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, how uh, even human stupidity can come into some housings in Washington. Ah, I'm worried about. Yeah. So yeah. before Tom is getting a, a harsher face, uh, let's go back to artificial intelligence. 
artificial intelligence is so interesting and so important, but still so young uh, that it is uh, that we um, have to take the Beyond CXM talk also in an HRM experience checkup, such as how is human intelligence and um, privacy uh, valued in the near future? And how is uh, some kind of um, socialized rating or social rating, like you mentioned, Tom, in China, is one of the near future scenarios in 10 years? Well, go, go a little simpler. One could say we have it over here as well. Shufa. Yeah. You don't know Shufa. Marshall Shufa is a, a kind of credit reform, credit reform for individuals. They give you a score which determines to quite an extent whether you will get that loan or not. It's the black box system, what you have yeah. in all credit giving mm -hmm. banks, such as they don't tell you that you have a bad uh, score in Shufa or in credit reform or God knows, but they are utilizing black box mechanisms about where you're living, where you work, if you have a regular income. And this is already in the black box and they don't tell you about the intellectual property. It's one of the examples out of this uh, podcast um, that going to the bank and asking for a loan or credit is getting like playing roulette these days. That is scary. Mm. I, I probably I, should have realized that that existed, but I did not realize that, that was there. And funny enough, there is one guy um, I, I'm very fond of um, because we were talking about advertising. And I read very much uh, another Thomas, Thomas Koch, who is one of the old guys in the advertising scene. And he has a column called um, Advertising Talk, Werbesprech. And he is quoting that, for instance, it's very interesting to see that till now, Tesla is not doing any commercials. They just go by word of mouth. And his thesis is that it's not too far away that not only his investors are asking for getting to do more proactively advertising to sell more cars, but that against Musk's own attitude that he does not need classical marketing and advertisement, that there is a time to come. That could be also something about beyond CXM. Is the Tesla experience so fantastic that he will not need advertisement. Hmm. It's interesting, a world where influencers are the only advertisers and they're not, you know, traditional influencers in the sense of, you know, the, uh, the way it's done now where they have a podcast and say, hey, look at these wonderful cosmetics that I use just actual lifestyle use that for high profile products. I think that could work. I mean, with Tesla, it works. I don't think it would work as well with say Axe body spray. Mm -hmm. in fact, I think it would work yeah. in the opposite direction for that, but maybe I'm too old for that product. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't take it from that, but, but I would like to take it from the premium product area to the point where I did not take his uh, point of view was that as long as the Gigafactory in Berlin Brandenburg is not existing and producing, they cannot fulfill the market request if they do proactive advertising, because then they create a demand, they cannot um, put the car into, yeah? And as they have to source the batteries in Europe and they do not have a battery producing factory, 
and it will not rain seldom earth or how this is properly translated all that shitty stuff the yeah, Chinese so. get out of Africa huh? what is the word rare Tom? yeah rare rare earth. Rare earth. Rare earth. Wow. <laughs> With a bloody German accent, of course. Yeah, the, the point is that <coughs> I wasn't surprised when uh, we visited our son in Ghana when he was doing his time in ISEC in Ghana as president of the local uh, committee country there, uh, country committee, so, so around, uh, that they they have a very smart way in getting into people's positive reflection. They invest, they give them trains, they give them the infrastructure, and they keep in the, they stay in the country and get some valuable resources, yeah? especially which are beneficial for them. Yeah? And such a surprise, the new Silk Road yeah, is properly established and the Chinese are getting a lot of value out of it. Unfortunately, for the guys in Romania and some other countries, they keep it like ex-territorial um, areas, such as I monitored in Ceylon. They have a big harbor and they do deliver a lot of cars. But instead of getting their people employed, they simply get people from China to do the work and not the locals. And this is the interesting aspect is beyond CXM, a customer experience and a customer experience we can manage, an expectation what is coming if we get after the pandemic um, exercise we are going through right now, we get a new, uh, let's say, a new deal 4.0 on a global working together. Yeah. I wish I could say, I would love for there to be something closer to truly global working together. Uh, it, it's a beautiful thought. Unfortunately, it seems everyone wants a global economy on their own terms. Uh, it's very well represented by what you said, a uh, Chinese company uh, using uh, Chinese labor to work the docks in a foreign port, mm. or the U.S. trying to use um, ridiculous tariffs to protect its economy when it's you know, trying to import goods and also still trying to export goods. Mm -hmm. There, nobody wants to be the person who tells their citizens, I'm sorry, there's no work for you because that work has gone to another country. Yeah. But that it's some of the reality of a global economy is that work goes where the work is most efficient, yeah. which means often cheapest. What yeah. has to happen is a balancing of the scales so that the people who are in uh, an African or an Asian or a South American country who are making, you know, pennies on the dollar, you know, little little bits of euros, are actually getting a real salary, a livable salary, something that lets them afford the goods that they are producing and selling. And then maybe it wouldn't feel like such a dishonest system. Mm -hmm. By all the critics um, I have mentioned in the first half hour on uh, more or less what is happening in the US, they are a lot smarter in getting businesses start up and running. Such as if you would have liked to start something like Uber here in Europe, you have to follow 37 different laws, which are European at that time. But it's harder to get this done instead of trying the first setup in San Francisco and move to New York and setting up the same company. It's one very large territory with a very strong economic 
opportunity of buying potential if you deliver the right service to the will of the people. If it's something, and we're back to TikTok, if it's something they like to see, they go for it. Yeah? yeah. And to see this that business becomes a truly major global concern, uh, it moves its offices to the Cayman Islands, so it doesn't have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. The interesting aspect is what could make Beyond CXM also in a scenario of fair trade and um, fair partnership? How could you create this? Yeah. It's a holistic view that needs to get pursued. The simple view is beyond CXM is if I get what I want without me really telling it. Mm -hmm. That's the simple egoistic view. The holistic yeah. view is optimizing the whole equation for well, the rest of the planet too. Yeah. Which means that I don't get what I want usually. Because, because it, it can't be egoistic then. Yeah. We have to remember the art of compromise, which is something that seems to yeah. have been lost. Yeah. And diplomacy, which is there to achieve these compromises and which is getting lost these days. If we were 20 years ago, hardliners like at that time or even 30 years, Reagan and uh, Brezhnev, uh, Gorbachev, uh, following were, uh, in the 80s, yeah, yeah uh, were able to negotiate or uh, uh, Anwar el Sadat and Begin, yeah, in Camp yeah. David. This this was history written in the states, mm -hmm. and this was spectacular. And I'm missing these historical achievements which are uh, slowly, slowly, slowly going down the hill. Yeah? And um, we won't change the world, but we can uh, give our little bits and pieces and in thoughts and throw it into the water. And these little stones might get, get their little curves and waves. Gosh, oh. Yeah, we can... Uh, like you say, we can't change the world. We can't change the world today. We can start start changing the course. And your children, I say your children simply because I don't have any. Yeah. Our children, in the broad sense, can yeah. carry on the work. We can, we can have a better world. Yeah. We absolutely can. We can... If we support them, for instance, this is the reason why I support ISEC or ISEC so much. Because if you have a mutual understanding on what's beneficial for the world and you speak to each other intercultural, interracial and not egoistically, we are approaching in that holistic approach. And if people understand each other in each other's culture and thoughts, it's the first important step forward. Yeah. That is what the founder, a Frenchman after World War II said, he will never ever like to have uh, a world war again. And he would donate all his life and his energy and his money in getting students and pupils in meeting up um, in an early stage to better understand each other. If there is communication, if there is the art of diplomacy and compromise, then there is an approach that if we set, help to set the sails in the right direction, that we can get something um, which is small, slowly, slowly setting the course into a brilliant further opportunity and uh, a better world. Yeah? People sometimes fear the idea of a global economy, but I don't think there is any fear in the idea of global humanity. Yeah. If we can all work together as people instead of you know, national adversaries or cultural adversaries, yeah. maybe we have a future. Which is kind of, and not only kind of, but actually a great closing statement. 
Yes! <laughs> got it! You got the final <laughs> word, Marcus. The final word. <laughs> Thank you, Marshall. It was a pleasure to have you with us again. And uh, this time without any bandwidth problems created by the capital city of Germany. And I appreciate that Telecom gave me a stable 100 megabit line in bandwidth, which I could work on. Very good. Which <laughs> Telecom. This, yeah. this, this was a promotional kickoff for the famous last words. And um, it's interesting that we have uh, another topic for next week already in the starting uh, and, and, and starting off action areas if we are on the marathon that is that a lot of uh, microsoft partners are consolidating again here in germany and that european ones are buying german ones to get a stronger footprint in overall germany and i guess that this is a movement what we see more or less also in the players in the titans and another aspect for the clash of the titans um, is to see how the ecosystems are getting stronger connected either by force or by merger or by being diminished well, well, thank you very much for having me again it's always a joy to talk to you both of you I, I, I hope you can do it again soon sometime yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, dear audience. Liebe Damen und Herren, es war's mal wieder. Wir freuen uns auf Sie nächsten Dienstag wiederzusehen. Man hört, sieht und streamt sich wieder beim CRM Converse am nächsten Dienstag um 19 Uhr. Bleiben Sie gesund. Ciao, ciao.